And so yeah. I was thinking, I remember thinking, imagine me getting my family, going to the Ukraine, not speaking the language, no money, just the clothes I'm standing in. That's tough, you know? Yeah. That is massive. And exactly as you said, like, obviously it's such a big story and it could be very hard to, like, stay tuned into it because it yeah. is so hard and it's so tough to listen to. Sometimes we can become desensitized. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. 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 And we can't, no, no, no we can't. We are, we are very aware, Martin, that there's over 10,000 Irish homelessness as well. Right. But that's no reason not to help the Ukrainian people. And I think if you, if you look back on the Irish history, when Orla, the Irish were emigrants, do you know what I mean? I think what we're doing for Ukraine at the moment will really stand good for us when the war is over we're and they go under, back home. We were under imperial occupation for a long time. Yeah. So it's in our DNA. So I think that, that's why it resonates with us, I think, a little bit more. Plus, when Live Aid was on, we gave more money per capita than any other nation on earth. But they reckon that everybody in Ireland gave a pound. Yeah, we're not we're really good that. at stuff like that. We're yeah. a great nation, you know. Yeah. It's just the politicians are bad, but everybody else is great. <laughs> we're very generous people. Um, Christy for president. <laughs> Let's start the campaign here. Um, the song was obviously hit 34 years ago and like resonated then, resonates now. Very emotional lyrics. But Christy, what was it about like when you first wrote it? Where did the song come from? Right, so um, when we were when we were starting off, people were saying to us all the time, "Listen, you have to. We want to get to the next level. You have to release a single." And they were saying, "Release this song and that song." And we knew we hadn't written our, our first single yet because we knew it was going to be there forever. You know, mm. your first single. So when we wrote this. Is we kind of knew we'd written something decent. So the the beginning of these, the hands of a tired man. That was my dad's hands. They were kind of calloused and hard from working. This is your man shroud was his life kind of thing. And and then at that time. The Catholic Church were losing their grip in Ireland, you know, and the, 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 about the teenage mother, all that. Because back then, before then, you were sent to the, to the mother and baby homes, you know. So we were just beginning to accept all that stuff. So the whole thing, Ireland was changing at the time, and that's what it did. And then the chorus, everybody hits you, everybody knocks you, was just that Irish kind of begrudgery thing that we, said, yeah. we have sometimes, where we knock, knock around. Because we'd be going to rehearsals, we used to have a shopping trolley with a gear in it. Mm. Go on, yes, ticks, you said, be saying all this, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you kind of had that begrudge, you're fighting against that begrudging attitude. Mm, yeah. But it just made us stronger. Yeah. But you know what's really interesting? A, a couple of weeks, two weeks ago, we did a gig with uh, Jerry Cinnamon in, in, in Malahide Castle. Oh, yeah. And we went out and we done this is, and like there was a crowd, like there were 17, 18, 19 year olds. They weren't just singing the chorus, they were singing the actual mm -hmm. verses for a song that's 34 years old. Mm. How can 18 and 19 year olds still know, know every word? As well as I'm singing but crazy more than that. But well, it's just, it's, it's good <laughs> music. It doesn't, good music <laughs> doesn't go. No, it's funny, it's funny. My son got married last Friday, right? And the, there were people of all generations there. And like my kids, like they're, and, and some of my nieces and nephews, and they're from 15, 16 yeah. up. Yeah. And they were singing songs from the 80s, yeah, the yeah. 90s. A lot and of somebody, kids today are liking that, that old, yeah. older stuff. My yeah. grandson's the same. Yeah, but it's funny. But, but somebody said, how do you know these songs? And <laughs> my nephew said, we're from the north side. It's called house parties. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're listening to our parents singing yeah. those songs. Yeah. You know, we, we did a gig in Baker Street last Christmas, right? So as Billy's saying, so you look at the front round of 15, 16, 18 year olds and uh, everything in between. And then I got a note on stage to sing happy birthday to a woman on the 80th birthday. Yeah. So from 80 to 15, like, that's amazing. That is amazing. That Does that give you away. a lift, Joe? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just, it's like music, as you know, is a, is a, you know, the international language, you know, and if, if, it's, if it's appealing to kids and their, you know, generations, two or three generations, in the same way we, we used to listen to, you know, rock and roll, even though we weren't around, we still listen to it, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, mm. of course, it's brilliant, like, you know, music. Yeah, we're trying happy. to analyse that way people kind of uh, through the ages have liked us because we're afraid to analyse it. We're just happy that it is the case, you know. That's the way it is.